this is really getting exciting. Um, so we wanted to talk about the, some of the relationships that um, that you've had um, in the martial arts, in the martial arts and, and one name that came up was Ron Duncan. Sensei yeah. Ronald Duncan. Yeah, um, the late Sensei Ronald Duncan, he, he just recently uh, passed on. And uh, he's a beautiful man. Um, I not only got to know him a little bit, I got to, over the years, I got to know um, his sons. And uh, I'm actually wearing their t-shirt for the occasion. Um, beautiful people. Uh, one one of the things that was really interesting about him is that he was always extremely straightforward. You know, he would uh, he would say, uh, "David, what's what's on your mind?" and uh, and I'd get the chance to uh, to talk to him. Very very straightforward. No need for for anything but uh, but the truth and honesty. Um, I asked him, you know everything and anything and he was quick quick-witted and, and very uh, straightforward about the answers which was wonderful and he taught that way too he taught very reality based he he taught from not only what what he was taught but also everything that he knew and he came in contact with what he developed you know he's known as a big innovator of martial arts, well, what's the innovation part? Well, the innovation part is is living the life of a martial artist and uh, and finding the most important aspect of martial arts, which is which is application. Um, his sons are, are beautiful people as well. Greg, I have the utmost respect for, um, much like his father, uh, extremely straightforward, and Ron Jr. Um, very passionate man, um, an emotional, a beautiful soul. Um, both very good martial artists, and uh, what's wonderful about that is, you know, as I as I come to know them um, in the martial arts, I, I tend to think of them as friends, uh, not just colleagues, and uh, just you know you can't say that about everybody usually in the martial arts and I wish it wasn't usually but it is usually usually in the martial arts you meet a stuffed shirt you know before you even get to talk to the person you have to hear about all of his life experiences and all these things well let me tell you about my training I never experienced that with any of them what was great is uh, I got to ask the questions you know they they refer to him as O Sensei, which uh, which is a title of endearment. O means like the great or the large Sensei, and uh, I would say you know, hey O Sensei, uh, you know I've been a huge fan of yours for years, and I watched you, you know I grew up with all the ninja magazines and stuff, and and it's a pleasure, you know I remember meeting him. It's a pleasure to meet you. I have a picture of us meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it was just great and uh, I met him during his it was a, a living legends they called it living legends uh, demonstration it was a tribute to him for having a school a dojo open for over 50 years he was the first to bring ninjutsu to the to the west and others you know others have claimed to be the first and you know Claim to be the uh, the originators of ninjutsu in the West, and that's that's good marketing, is what that is. And you can't knock them for it. Mm. Understand that Crest is better than Colgate, and all that. You know, who knows what the truth is? The thing is that marketing is always going to be there. You know, uh, Burger King's so much better than McDonald's, and all these things. But what it really has to do with is you know, all of that. All of that is silliness, it's nonsense. What you really have to do is you just look at the numbers, the ones and zeros. And the, and the truth of the matter is that that, that, man, that man was bringing the ninjutsu in way before anyone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when you got to see him move and when you got to see his skills, you knew that he was coming from a place of, uh, 
of expertise. And, um, you know, he was the first and really remained the only one that really didn't refer to ninjutsu wholly as ninjutsu. He often used the term shinobi jutsu, which historians agree is a more accurate term. The term uh, shinobi no mano is thrown around a lot now, and as far as I know, Ronald Duncan used that term quite, quite frequently. Um, when you look at terminology, when you look at history, the man was aligned with it. And <clears throat> the interesting thing is that he would attribute things correctly. He would say, you know, I got this from the Hakoru, and I attained this from um, my study with uh, Susui Shitsuru, and I attained this when I studied with um, my ninjutsu instructor. And he held back a little bit on, uh, on talking about his ninjutsu instructor for years, and I think that there's a lot of merit to that. And that's a personal story, and I'm not going to not going to speak on that, but there are a lot of personal reasons why he didn't want to, and he shared those personal reasons with me. His work with the government, uh, governmental agencies was quite impressive. Um, he did work with not only the Marines that everybody knows about, but he also did work with the CIA that not a lot of people know about. Um, he was kind enough. We used to have uh, wonderful phone conversations and any time we met in person um, I just really enjoyed it. I got to uh, uke for him on one occasion and uh, <laughs> it was an occasion I won't quickly forget. It was really funny. How'd he, that go down? <laughs> he, was, he was talking, it was in Atlantic City and it was during a big martial arts demonstration and he's, he's David Yes. Would you uke for me? Sure. Absolutely. So I come out and he says, um, David, you're going to attempt to disarm me. <laughs> and he had, a, he had a knife. He was always very serious. Although, on many occasions I got him to laugh. On one occasion. <laughs> if I could only share that story. But <laughs> I can't. I can't. It would, it's a little, a little too much to share, but... On the on this occasion, it was it's just hilarious. Um, hit me up personally for the Ronald Duncan story, in which he he lost control and laughed hysterically, which was awesome, awesome. I'm so glad that I got to do that. See, if you knew the man, he was always very poised, very collected, and extremely respectful. He'd never lose that. You couldn't get him to falter couldn't get him to lose control, but as I got to know him, I got to know his sense of humor, and I knew the right buttons to push, and uh, uh, it was just awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'll do a quick impression. He just, he looked at me, and he knew what I was doing, and he just went, <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. It was awesome. And then, and then he went, <laughs> he was going to lose it. He was going to laugh hysterically. And he just went, <laughs> he goes, he goes, excuse me. <laughs> then he walked out into the hallway. He probably lost it. And just lost it. And then he came back. <laughs> with like this, this. That was awesome. Awesome. That was my, one of my favorite times with him. Um, looking back. Anyways, um, who came for him? in Atlantic City and he's got a knife, he's got, he's got a, a folding knife that he was really fond of and it was, you know, it's a dull, like aluminum blade, um, but it, it holds like a knife, it wields like a knife. So training purposes only kind of knife? Training purposes only and uh, really cool knife, I wonder where the heck he got that from, but anyways, he, um, he's wielding a knife and I'm supposed to disarm, so he says, give me a common disarm, I'm like, all right, well, I've seen tons of common disarm, so I do a common jujitsu disarm. He slices me up, and uh, he says, "Show me, show me something else." He says, "Really, come at me." 
So I go to come at him, and he's just cutting me up. So I, the funniest part was, after he cuts me up, I'm reacting to the cut. So I'm getting cut in the leg, and I go down. I'm getting cut here, and I go down, I go down. I'm realizing he's not stopping. <laughs> he's not stopping. He's crawling over my body, continuing to, to just, like, hack me into pieces. And every vital and every non-vital. It was just everything, you know? And there were times, there were times during the demonstration, I was thinking maybe I shouldn't have okay. You know, <laughs> just like so. Um, there was one point where, <laughs> where he's he's got me and I, I'm dead like three times. So I go to lay down and he's still on top of me, bop, bop, bop. So just proving to the audience that there would be no survivors. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I didn't have a lot of experiences like that. I know. A good friend of mine, uh, uh, T. Rodriguez, and say he he lived that. You know, he got to do that all the time with uh, with those sensei. Um, those experiences were limited, but uh, I had I had a lot of a lot of great uh, other experiences. We had organized uh, a bunch of meetings that we were going to do uh, before he passed, but we didn't have enough time. Time kind of ran out. We didn't get a chance to do them. Uh, I regret that. I wish I wish I could have had more time with them. I think everybody does. Um, an incredibly genuine man. You know, there's a lot of thrown around judgments in the martial arts, and there's a lot and who's historically accurate. And I'll tell you this much: the man taught from the knowledge that he was given. So, you know, some people come up to me and they say, you know, Dave, you're going to be honest with me. And I say, of course. And they say, you know, was he for real? And I say, he was genuine. And what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is something very, very important. Is that, is that people are always asking, well, what's historically accurate and what's not? He was genuine. He was not deceiving anyone. What he was taught is what he presented. So, should someone say that um, Ronald Duncan was a false martial artist or something like that, they would not be speaking of the man because the man was incredibly genuine. They would be speaking on the man's teachers. So you're saying that Don Drager is, is not genuine, and I don't see how you could do that. You would be saying that his other teachers or somehow not genuine. Ernie Cates was his judo instructor. There's no denying the fact that that man is genuine. I've met him, and I've got to see him train, and I've got to see him demonstrate, and, and his judo is, is um, well, he put the time in, and it's obvious, because he's very skillful. I don't think anyone would argue that. So when, when you talk about legitimacy, incredibly legitimate. You know, there was a man that that lived it. He talked about things and I don't I don't know that I have the permission to share some of the things that he told me about. So I'm not going to, but he he told me in confidence different missions that he was on.